All right, guys, it's going to be a real hot spot. Sorry. Andy, Andy, wouldn't let me do anything yesterday. Uh, good morning, guys. Some of y'all, I probably talked to you on the phone. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, I mumble. And, and I mumble at 6.30 in the morning, boy, at 2 a.m. It's a, it's a real challenge. Also, always beat me, okay? I have no cell phone, all right? I have it, but this thing sits in the car. All right, so if you ever need me, beat me. All right, or call the house. Preferably beat me, because you know, the call the house is scared of my wife. But she thinks it's something with my kids. Uh, so anyway, beat me. Um, but the guys, 64. I'm going out with this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to change me. You're not going to change me, all right? So, uh, beat me, all right? But, yeah, it's funny that sometimes I get in the car in the morning, they all these calls, like, damn. Yeah, yeah I think people are trying to get us to know about it. Uh, all right. Uh, let's start with the breakup plexus, because that's, that's such a gimme. Uh, What are, what are boards? March 9th. March 9th? Okay. So we break plexus, root C5 to T1. All right. Uh, C5, 6 come together for what? Upper trunk. Upper trunk. C7 forms what? Middle trunk. Middle trunk. C8, T1? Mm-hmm. Lower trunk. All right. All right. Uh, each trunk will divide into what? Anterior and posterior divisions. You're right. All right. So the anterior divisions of, of the upper middle trunk come together and form what? Spherical. Uh, it's a cord, but it's not superior. Lateral. Lateral. Lateral, lateral to what, Jeremy? Yeah. Remember that case? Yeah, lateral to uh, <coughs> yeah, actually our artery. Got Go dude. Yeah, lateral cord. All right, so this is this is gonna be upper trunk, middle, and lower. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords. All right, so the anterior two anterior divisions of upper middle trunk. Come together from the lateral cord. All right. <clears throat> the anterior division of, of the lower trunk forms your middle, your medial cord. All right. And then the three posterior divisions come together and form your posterior cord. All right. Which, which, uh, maybe two nerves that come off at the root level. What's it come off of Andy Boucher? Uh, C5. C5, alright. So C5, dorsal scapula. Alright. Remember where did that come off? Five, six, and seven. Alright, those are the two nerves that come off at the root level. Remember, where does the dorsal scapula go to? I mean, the super scapula. Long thoracic go to? Okay. Does everybody agree with Reno? Mm-hmm. No, sure. Mm-hmm. All right. How about dorsal scapula? Supraspinatus, supraspinatus, supraspinatus. Mm. I'm sorry, that's a supraspinatus nerve. Got it. So what does dorsal scapula go to? Rhomboids. Who said that? You ask me or tell me. Tell me. Tell me. It's rhomboids. Okay. So C5 dorsal scapula goes rhomboids. Six. Five, six, seven, long thoracic goes to the serratus anterior. All right, so, you know, it knocks out you. That's when you have the winging on the scapula. All right. Long boys, it's hard with this. You just have to, you know, kind of pull their scapula together and see if that wakes up. Where's the print come off of? All right. All right, guys. If you, all right, all right. You have a, um, you're going to explore breaker plexus. All right. Uh, which cervical triangle are you going to go to, anterior or posterior? Posterior. Posterior. Which muscle are you going to make the incision on the border of? Cervical and mastoid. Cervical and Okay. All right. And what, uh, what, between what muscles 
there's a brachial plexus. Pass. An anterior middle scalene. Okay. <clears throat> what lies right, and there's a scalene fascia right there. And then so, what's going to lie right on top of that, uh, that uh, right beneath the scalene fascia? On top of the muscles, but beneath the fascia. What? Somebody said something. Who said it? You got it, phrenic. All right. So, you know, protect the phrenic when you go in there. So, the first thing you do when you, when you get down to the uh, uh, scalene fascia, open the fascia and look for your phrenic. All right, there's a kid that you've seen uh, had, uh, had a uh, uh, paralyzed diaphragm as a baby with a birth injury. Came out, had bilateral brachial plexus palsies. One, one of the, uh, on one side, it was associated with a uh, uh, paralyzed diaphragm. Went out to Houston and had, was going to have a repair of the opposite side, and they got the other front end. So, anyway, that's not what you want. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. You move your arm, you can't breathe. Uh, uh, so, anyway, so watch for the front end. All right. What passes just, what, what else passes? Uh, not between anterior and middle scalenes, but just below. Uh, no, I've got break artery. Okay, yeah. Subclavian artery, actually. Okay. It's a flavin artery. It comes out, and then once it passes the first rib, uh, it turns into axillary artery. And then once it passes the pectoralis minor, it, it becomes a brachial artery. So, so, so if you're going to do an infratentorial brachial plexus expiration, infraclavicular, excuse me, infraclavicular brachial plexus expiration, which muscles are you going to take down, Jeremy? Pectoralis. Which one? <clears throat> Major. Okay. Which else? What else? What? What? Subclavius? No. Think about it. What else? What else? What? What? What determines what level your cords? What muscle you underneath when when your your cords are being identified medial lateral posterior to the axillary artery? Comes off the coracoid process of the scapula. If you got a pectoralis major, what else you gonna have? What other pectoralis muscle you gonna have? Minor. minor. Okay. You have to take the pectoralis minor muscle down, guys. All right. Uh, uh, so, and that, I mean, that you'll see the cords. All right. Trunk level. Give me two nerves that come off the upper trunk. Or one nerve. Subscapular. Subscapular. All right. So, come off the. That's superscapular. And hey, Andy Boucher, <laughs> what's the superscapular innervation? Superscapular is superscapular. Okay. And that's those two muscles obviously back here. All right. They're, they're, part, of your, they're part of your muscle rotator cuff. They allow you to externally rotate your shoulder. All right. What's the other muscle that's part of the muscular rotator cuff? It's called the sit group. S-I-T. Superspinatus, infraspinatus. Teres minor. Teres minor. All right. What innervation is teres minor? We'll get there in a second. Axillary. Axillary. All right. Comes off the posterior cord. We'll see in a second. All right. How can you tell? All right. So, and, and, so go back to spinase and spinase. They, they help abduct your arm, too. All right. Uh, but let's say you had a, a, a C5 injury. You wouldn't be able to be difficult to abduct your arm there. All right. Uh, how can you how how could you identify a superscapular? And there are there's a superscapular nerve will pass through a little notch in the scapula called the superscapular notch, and there's a transverse ligament that lies over that, and they're unusual. But I've seen one recently that we have a superscapular neuropathy where that notch is too small, or the, the or that transverse ligament gets thickened and it it, it causes a lot of shoulder pain, and some weakness in supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Okay, but you get Shoulder pain, and you can get a weakness of those muscles with the C5 uh, injury. How would you be able to determine superscapular versus a C5 root? Superscapular, infrascapular, you can't abduct. Okay, what else? What else? What, what muscle sits right here? Deltoid. deltoid. Your deltoid is still going to fire <laughs> with the superscapular. Okay, it's going to be weak with the C5 root injury. Okay. Uh, 
And so those are really, it's an entrapment neuropathy. It's really, it's an unusual neuropathy, but, it, but, uh, but you can get it. Uh, all right, so, uh, and there's one other, it's called a nurse of clavus. So clavus is something like the clavicle. All right, it doesn't do a damn thing. Oh, it, <laughs> it protects the lung when you're sticking a, uh, when you, uh, <coughs> sticking a central line in, or protects the lung when you do the bottom of the scapula when you're doing that brachial flexor expression, you want to see the nerves underneath the scapula and you, and you divide the scapula. Uh, it kind of gives you a little leeway to keep it away from the nerves, the most important artery. Uh, all right. The, uh, all right, the lateral cord. Gives off. And the medial cord give off. It's called a root. Not really a root, but and form together to form a nerve, which is what? Median. Median. All right. The medial cord continues on as what? On. On. And lateral cord, what? Okay. All right. The posterior cord, what does it do? We just talked talk about one axillary. Axillary. And what does the axillary go to? Deltoid. Deltoid and? Here's minor. All right. And then it continues on as what? Got it. All right. Now there can be some other things called uh, <coughs> like medial and brachial cutaneous, lateral and brachial cutaneous, uh, cutaneous innervation to the, to the forearm. All right. Uh, so these are your main motors. All right, muscular cutaneous, where does it go? What's the innervate? Biceps. Biceps. What else? Brachialis. Yeah. Brachialis. Okay. All right. The uh, uh, radial nerve, just in general terms, what does it do? Extensors. Extensors. What else? <clears throat> Extensors down in the forearm and also in triceps. All right. Ulnar. And okay, also does some flexors, all right, and uh, median flexors also, thenars, okay, on a hypothenars, okay, all right, uh, all right, and trapping the owner, where, where are you going to catch it? If it's going to be, you have an owner neuropathy, uh, give me, give me the most common. Okay, cubital tunnel. All right, just uh, just beneath, behind your your medial epicondyle. All right, so you, your medial epicondyle sits here, and then your electron, the elbow, funny bone sits there, and there's got a little ligament that goes over it. It's called the cubital tunnel, and all the nerve passes underneath that cubital tunnel. All right, uh, and so that's most common. It's called a tardy and ulnar palsy. Okay, uh, and they come in primary pain. Some numbness, okay, and and what's the what's the sensory distribution on the nerve, little finger, and the medial half of your ring finger, all right, on both sides, uh, and then they'll come in with some hypothenar and, and, and just a hand weakness, all right, okay, the uh, uh, and so you, you you go in there, make an incision along it, cut that 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 uh, retinacum, the roof of it. Then some people will trans, will trans, do a transition where they bring the nerve out of the cubital tunnel, all right, and bring it up. Okay, let's say you did that. All right, you, you brought the nerve up, trans, transposed it, and the patient still comes back two months later, no better, but and you still got evidence of ulnar neuropathy. What's going on with the patient? Resident cut the nerve. <laughs> No, it's the nerves there, but it's a good, that's probably the highest probability. No, no. There's a thing called an arcade of Froch, okay? Uh, it's about, mm, probably about six centimeters proximal to the, uh, to the elbow. Uh, and it's basically, it's where the nerve comes, where the ulnar nerve comes to the intermuscular septum. All right, that septum's got a little lip to it, it's called arcade of Froch, F, R, O, S, H, or no, H, S, E, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm almost spelling. Anyway, so reach up there. If you're doing a transition, reach up and you can literally stick your finger up there and you can feel it and get a pair of scissors and cut it, okay? 
and as easy as that. Otherwise, there's a good chance, you can, or there's a chance, you can trap that nerve again. When you transpose, you can trap against that edge. All right. All right. The uh, uh, owner, where else? <coughs> Sorry? Do you own the Got it. Where's that? The wrist. Got it. The lower side. All right. The, uh, and yeah, there's Which right here just by the pisiform bone in the hammock. All right. There's a, uh, transverse volar ligament, then just make that the, the transverse carpal ligament to get your carpal tunnel, get your carpal tunnel. The nerves pass between that. Is there any sensory changes on that? Do you, with, a, with the ulnar neuropathy against canal, do you have sensory changes? No. No, because it's, this, the <laughs> sensory branch branches off just proximal to that canal and runs over the volar ligament. So it's a pure motor neuropathy. All right. That's good, Jeremy. This is a pure on and around. All right. That's much less common, but most of the time you're going to see it right there. All right. Uh, all right. The radial nerve comes down. And where's the, what groove is passed around on the humerus? Spiral groove. All right. So a lot of times you see these kids that come over uh, 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 humerus fractures and have a, uh, 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 could have a radial nerve injury. All right, so it comes around the spiral groove, and then it, then it comes down, goes by the medial or lateral epicondyle, all right, and then it passes underneath the brachioradialis, and it pierces the muscle and allows you to do this, which is a supinator, all right, and then it kind of hugs and goes on down, and then it's uh, we'll passed through the snuff box here and then provides sensory innervation. This is kind of the autonomous zone of the, of the radial nerve between the dorsal aspect of your wrist, of your hand, between the your thumb and then your index finger. All right, all right. The divides and when it just before it pierces the the supinator, it divides in the superficial branch that <coughs> follows extent extensive uh, carpal radialis now. All right, and then a deep branch that goes through the supinator. So that deep branch is when you get the posterior osseous syndrome. All right, uh, and what can't you do? What's the kind of distinguishing characteristic when you uh, of the poster osseous syndrome as it passes through and sometimes that supinator will get scarred or get a, a lip to it? And what, what's the thing that is most difficult? Or the kind of the you can determine that it's a poster osseous nerve? Can't you, you can't extend at the MP joints? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can't extend at the MP joints. Now the medial nerve gives off anterior osseous. All right, and remember, that's where you're talking about the pinch. You can't pinch because it's, it's hard to flex uh, the, the uh, uh, IP joint on the uh, uh, thumb with the, with the antinosis nerve. All right, and that's because of pronator teres. Uh, the muscle that the uh, ulnar nerve passes through is called the pronator teres, and then it's, it eventually comes down, and, uh, or the median nerve, sorry, and uh, help you with that. Uh, so, with the radium, with the ulnar nerves, usually cubital, can be Guillain's canal. All right. With the radial nerve, oftentimes you get a, a posterior osseous syndrome. <clears throat> median, you get an anterior osseous. All right. Uh, and then the most commonly medium is where? Medial is carpal, carpal tunnel. All right. And what's the little nerve that comes off just past the flexor retinaculum? So the flexor retinaculum is sitting here, the all the nerves underneath it, and it passes through, and then it sends a little branch back. It's called the median dollar nerve. It's a little recurrent branch of the median nerve. It's called the median dollar nerve because if you cut it, go ahead and, and check with a bunch of zeros to it. All right? So it's And that's the most important branch of the median nerve for all you guys. All right? Is flexor retinaculum sitting here, and if you stick a of mayo is underneath and cut it, all right. But you got to make sure that little recurrent branch is not in, in the jaws of the scissors because right? it does. You lose all your thin muscles, all right. That's this is what separates us from apes, okay. The ability to pose your thumb, all right. So uh, that's a really important nerve. Uh, um, all right, 
We can come down here. Let's see. L4, 5, S1, S2, S3. What, must, what nerve is that for? This is your nerve, guys. Which one? It's big. Big. Runs, runs the back of your side. side. All right. <laughs> Inside of guy. All right. Uh, so L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. All right. The sag nerve passes through what frame in the pelvis? Or what's notch? The sciatic notch. Greater sciatic notch. Got it. All right. What muscle passes through that greater sciatic notch? Piriformis. Piriformis. Ah, damn good. All right. Good, Joe. Good, Jeremy. <laughs> And does the sciatic nerve pass above or below the piriformis? Below. below it. Okay, that's why you can get a piriformis syndrome. All right, because you have a notch here and you got muscle going through and the nerve passes underneath it. All right. And the piriformis, and, and most of the time, a lot of times, the only couple I've seen all have been in a girls doing equestrian, not trying to sex us, but girls doing equestrians. Okay. Uh, they come in, no offense, you know, adolescent female, come in, pain and pain, oh, shit. Uh, just go, please go. Uh, <laughs> but she, they do indeed have a problem, okay, it's in the fear of formal syndrome, all right? Are they, in that situation, are gluteal muscles weak? Gluteus medius maximus? And we say, say no. Why are you saying no, man? I don't know, they depend on that. Got it. They're innervated by superior and inferior gluteal nerves, which come above that muscle. All right. So the, the sciatic <clears throat> comes below it. All right. So here's sciatic, and you're still up in the thigh, and it divides into two branches. What are those two branches? It's still up in the thigh. All the most time they're pretty much together, but what are the two divisions of sciatic nerve? Let me put it that way. Sound of the silence. Tibial and popliteal. Talk to me. Tibial and popliteal. It's not, not popliteal. Tibial. tibial. Posterior tibial and comparative. Comparative. Com 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 awesome. Awesome. All right. And does a common perineal innervate anything in the, in the uh, thigh itself? No. No. Tibial, does it? Yep. Yeah. What's innervate? Hamstrings. All right. It will innervate the hamstrings. All right, and then it passes through the popliteal fossa, continues as a posterior tibial nerve. And so that's going to catch all your, your gastric soleus muscle groups, okay? Uh, <coughs> uh, so it becomes a posterior tibial nerve and there's a the leg. And when common perineal does what? Retro fibular head and splits. Splits, okay? To a deep perineal. Into a superficial. What does superficial perineal do? Everture. Everture. So it goes to prince long as prince brothers. Does providing sensation any? Uh, between the two, or between the great toe and the second digit. Well, it's, it's going to be more louder than that. The, the autonomy, you'll get some of that, but if you're going to think great toe, the, that the last branch of deep perineal actually goes right between your your, your great toe and your and your, and your not great toe yeah. second toe okay <laughs> uh, where a superficial perineal will catch most of the dorsum of your foot and a lot of aspect of your foot okay but the time zone for the deep perineal goes between the the, the great toe and the second toe uh, so superficial perineal allows you to divert all right deep perineal is <laughs> what dorsal flex. All right, dorsal flex. All right, you got it. Patient comes in and was at home. Uh, sister broke a mirror, a piece of glass in the couch. You jump on the couch, get a laceration right here. All right, and you go to the ER and they sew it up. And now it's been a month and Patient comes back, they had an ER, the ER doctor said, look for it, comes back, has a foot drop. 
Okay? All right. And also has DQC versus. So what nerve does that come be? The compound. The compound yeah. now. All right. So you got eversion and weakness in the dorsal flexion. All right. All right. So you're a month out. What are you going to do with it? You know what? Sprinkle nerve growth factor in there and see if they'll <laughs> join together, or are you going to wait? You going to wait? Nerve. How long are you going to wait? It's been a month since you're tripping all over her feet. It's a sharp injury. Let me ask you this, Jim. Well, it's, it's a sharp it's, injury it's, at the time. I'd repair yeah. it right away. But otherwise, I think you wait like six months or something. Like that. Would anybody else wait six months? Six weeks. Huh? Six weeks. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. some actual studies, and, and, and she has no conduction past that area where laceration is. Then I would probably, probably with a sharp injury, I'd explore it. All right, with the dog, with a, a blunt injury, Jeremy, I'm with you. I, I give that plenty of time. A sharp injury, I'd explore it. All right, so you do explore it, and you see the common perineal has indeed been cut, but the proximal end is retracted some, and then you so you <clears throat> come in here and make an incision in the lateral aspect of your of your knee, con, find the common perineal, but there's a gap now about that much between the the proximal and distal, and, and distal nerves. And you dissect along it to try to free it up. Um, but you still got a gap now that much. You, it just won't come together. So what you going to do? Serial nerve. Serial nerve. Serial nerve. Where's the serial nerve? Playing the Achilles and the Achilles tendon. What muscles in it, mate? Nothing. Okay. I forgot to tell you one thing. This kid had a brachial flex injury at birth, and they, they took the serial nerve. <laughs> it's gonna be nice lick. Radial nerve. What? Radial nerve. Oh, you are gonna take the radial nerve and the shit's gonna paralyze your arm? <laughs> 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 uh, but so anyways, yeah, that's serial nerve you think about doing a grab, nerve grab. Uh but but again, damn, she had a weak arm when she was born because her, her shoulder got stuck and they used the serial nerves to graft. <laughs> graft the freckle flex the back here. I'm sorry? Both. Yeah, these both. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was one bad injury. All right. So what else are you gonna do? You got guys. You got to get up that much. You got to close it. It's so close. But if you close that much, the damn thing's just gonna pop apart. So what are you gonna do? What joint is this? What joint is it right here? The knee. Knee. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Take some flex the knee. Flex the damn knee. You're playing the damn nerve together. <laughs> All right, flex your knee. This is a this is a, a oral uh, oral board question. I, I present it. Trust me, not many people got it right either. All right. So, so you have to keep the knee in flexion. Exactly. Then for get get it then. Get your orthopod to come in there and put them in one of those. Cast. You know, you can cast it or they have those braces. I can't remember what they call them. You got the little oh, yeah. degrees. Yeah. And so flex flex the knee. You know, bring the ends of the nerve together. Show your nerve together, and then gym every about six weeks. Start bringing it out, okay. All right. Uh, that way, you, you know you don't have to you don't have to graft anything. Even if you had a serial nerve, it's much better if you could do a primary pair than put a serial nerve graft in it. So just anything across the joint, flex the damn joint, okay. I don't care if it's the owner or radio or anything else, flex the damn joint, uh, and then just gradually bring it out over about six you know six weeks or so. So you know your, your suture line is repaired and kind of gradually. Ready to stretch it. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. What innervates most of the muscles? Your extensors or your knee? Femoral. Femoral. All right. What innervates your, your uh, adductors? Operator. Operator. Okay. Good. So, adductor longus, all those adductor muscles, operating nerve, femoral nerve, it's going to be your quads. Vastus, all right. I mean, femoral nerves. Uh, come in, painful foot, all right. But the, but the, but the heel is spared, all right. But the patient comes in a lot of foot, foot pain, sole, bottom of the foot, all right. Sole of the foot, come in a lot of pain. They have decreased sensation in the bottom of the foot. Difficulties with some of the toe flexors, but they have a spare sensation of the heel. 
what, what, what nerve is that? What's that called? Called tarsal tunnel syndrome. And what nerve is that? Yeah. What? You asking to tell me? Posterior tibia. You asking to tell me? Tell me. Posterior tibia. All right. So posterior tibia, when it comes down, passes just behind the medial malleolus. And then where's the damn malleolus? There's a, a, a flexor retinaculum around it. Okay? And uh, most of these people have had, you'll get a prior history of trauma. It has a trauma doctor before, and that flexor retinaculum gets thickened. And catches the the uh, posterior tibial nerve behind the medial malleolus, so it come in foot pain uh, and a weakness in the toe flexors. But the, but the, again, the heel is bare because the little branch that innervates the, the, the calcaneus comes off before that flexor right back on. Okay, it's kind of like the ends come out. All right, all right. So y'all got that? All right. Uh, Talking about the development of the nervous system. All right, happens towards the end of the third week of gestation, and you have surface ectoderm turns into what? Yeah, let's just let's just say that's a penis. All right, that's ectoderm. Surface ectoderm is one small area. It becomes specialized. That's a little plate. No, it's, it's the it's neural ectoderm, okay? Yeah, neural plate. All right, that's neural ectoderm. And then what does it do? All right, you get the edges of it roll up, and they form what? Neural folds. Neural folds and dip between. It's called a <laughs> neural groove. All right, and then that neural groove will come together and form a neural tube. All right. And, it, it, and all this happens, uh, uh, it, everything during development happens in a cephalad called that direction. So things happen quicker up top than that below. All right. But the neural tube, when it initially forms, got, is open uh, up anterior and posterior. They call it anterior and posterior neural pores. All right. Open ends of it. Anterior neural pore closes when? 24, 25. Yeah, 24, 25. Somewhere like that. And then posterior neural pore? 26. Okay. Yeah, and in some mites, it's like 18 to 20 some mites for the anterior, and like 25, 26 for the posterior. Okay. All right, so now you got a neural tube. All right. And tell me the three primary brain vesicles. All right, so the neural tube now comes up, and then you got something like that. Oops. And you get three primary. Primary brain vesicles. What are they, guys? Pros and cephalon. All right. Pros. What's this one? Knees and cephalons. Knees. What's this one? It's a hind, hind brain. What's it called? No. Rhombus. Rhombus cephalon. All right. So those are three primary brain vesicles. Pros and cephalon, knees and cephalon, rhombus and cephalon. The primary then becomes secondary. And the prosencephalon turns into what? Encephalon. <laughs> you got it, guys. Mesencephalon forms what? Mesencephalon. And rhombocephalon forms what? Metamyl. Okay. Metencephalon. Myelencephalon. Metencephalon. What is, what, what, what's formed from that? Pons and cerebellum. Pons and cerebellum. Hey, Andy. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you? Welcome. The myelin cephalon forms what? Medulla. Okay. What's the uh, mesencephalon? Midbrain. Midbrain. Okay. All right. And then telencephalon, cerebral hemispheres, diencephalon, obvious. Okay. So those are your secondary brain vessels. All right. Um, um, there's, in that neural two. You have little cells off to the side. And what are those little cells called? Neural crest. Neural crest. All right. What does neural crest do, Gary? Forms a bunch of things. Like what? Give me, just give me, just give me, a, <laughs> give me one. Um, Swine cells. What else? Where does the adrenal gland? All right. What else? Melanocytes. Melanocytes. What else? 
We're a pre-ganglionic sympathetic neurons in the spinal cord located. Pre-ganglionic sympathetic neurons in the spinal cord. Where are they? Pre-ganglionic sympathetic cells in the spinal cord. Intermediate lateral cell column. Okay? All right. And then where are the post-ganglionic sympathetic neurons in the spinal level? Sympathetic chain. Sympathetic ganglion come from neural crest. Dorsal root ganglion come from neural crest. All right? Um, abdominal blasts come from neural crest. Some of your brachial arches come from neural crest. All right? So the neural crest are specialized cells. All right? And then as the neural tube grows, you know, it, it, it then there's a mantle layer that comes, forms, which is becomes your future gray matter of your of your uh, core, and then the marginal layer, which is future white matter. All right? All right? So then if you look at the core, Oops. If you look at cord, you saw a cord look like that, where this is the posterior median, sulcus anterior, posterior intermediate sulcus. Which level of the core would you be at? What would you have to be above? Let me see a post enemy sulcus. It could be in cervical. Cervical or else? It has to be T6 or above, above. Okay? Because if you, here's. <clears throat> Here's your gray matter, okay? When you see a posterior image sulcus, this is a posterior funiculus, lateral funiculus, and anterior funiculus. Funiculus is just a bunch of fibers, all right? But each of the funiculi have got fasciculi in them, fasciculi are your fiber tracts, all right? Which, which fasciculus is this? Okay. Cusillus. Which one is this? Cuneatus. Cuneatus. All right. When do you pick up cuneatus? T6 and above. Okay, so that's when you can see the post intermediate. All right. What is this little bump right there? What? Intermediate, intermediate horn. horn. What's in the intermediate horn, Jeremy? So those are the pre ganglionic uh, Got it. All right. Pre ganglionic sympathetics. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, you got. And when are you going to see the, when are, where are you going to see the IML? What levels? T1, T1 to L2. Got it. You got it. You got it. There's also about that same level, a little bump here. All right. Same level about T1, L2 or C8, L2. What's that little bump called? Who said that? Clark's nucleus. All right. And what's involved with Rema? Spinal cerebellum. Spinal cerebellum. What's spinal cerebellum? Anterior or posterior? Posterior. You're right. Posterior. Boucher. Oh, damn. Touche, Boucher. All right. Uh, um, and remember, it's about the same as the uh, IML. All right. Got it? All right, now your, your, your gray matter is divided in, depending on the kind of architecture and cell density and the way the cells are divided into 10 laminae. What are those laminae called? Who's, whose name is associated with it? Rex head. Rex head. All right. The first six are going to be in the posterior horn. All right. And uh, so the first six can be in the posterior horn. All right. Got a little center canal there. Seven is going to be around your IML. All right. Uh, eight, nine, going to be in your ventral horn. And ten is going to be around your central canal. All right. What's Rick's Antilamine 2 named? Substantial Substantial. 
Okay. And what's it use? What's it involved with? Pain. Pain. All right. So your spinal thalamics are coming in. Your spinal thalamic tract. The only one you really need to worry about is post your spinal thalamic. All right. Pain and temperature. Where's Where's the first order neuron in the spinal thalamic tract? In all these spinal tracts, where's the first order neuron? Neuron number one. On the skin, that's the receptors, maybe, but not the dorsal ganglion. Okay, what, what type of cell is that? CD unipolar. CD unipolar. All right, so the central process, all right, on the uh, posterior spinal thalamic, CD unipolar cell is going to come in via the dorsal root, and then it's going to enter this track right here. Whose track is that? The sourus. The sourus. Uh, the sickness, okay? Attract the sewer. So that's going to come in and it's going to go where? Up or down. Yeah, up, down a couple levels. And then, but where is it? What, what breaks that lambda going to go into? Two. Two. All right. And it's then going to cross over, like you said, Jeremy, over the course about one or two levels. And then ascend. All right. Up the brain stem. All right. And then it goes to the uh, VPL thalamus. And from VPL thalamus, it passes through what part of the internal capsule? Anterior postal or, or body? Posterior limb. You asked me to tell me? Posterior limb. Posterior limb. Okay. And it goes where? <laughs> where? Postal right, what's What, what Brahman area is the postal gyrus? All right. What's the uh, precentral gyrus? Motor. What's premotor? What? Five. Five. Who else? Who say that? By any is. <laughs> Six. All right. All right. That's a premotor area. All right. What arises from uh, areas four and six? What what descending pathway, descending track arises from areas four and six? All right. Well, corpus spinal tract. All right. All right. It passes through what level, what limb of the internal capsule? You sure? I right, double check that. Okay. All right. And then post your limb. All right, and then passes down several peduncles, and then breaks up those little vessels in the pons. All right, and then it comes down and towards the medulla. And what happens at the inferior medulla? Does what? Degasation. Cause what? What, what degasations? Pyramidal degasations. Does the corpus spinal tract go down to all the spinal levels? Does it go down to the thoracic region? Does no, it just cerebral lumbar. You sure? So it doesn't go to the thoracic region at all? No. And, uh, <laughs> say yes. <laughs> You're right. It goes to all levels, okay? Yeah. The anterior, about 80% of them will decussate the primal decussation, okay? About 20% don't. They form the anterior corpus spinal, and those are the ones that go down the circle area, Jeremy. Okay. With, with, uh, something to do. All right. Uh, look at those tracks, like spinal cells are tracks, that's like the dorsal column meal in this, because I mean, that stuff's just easy, guys, don't give them that. All right. Uh, spinal thalamic, just remember the posterior spinal thalamic. All right. Spinal cerebellars, what, okay, what, uh, of the spinal cerebellar, what spinal, there's a anterior posterior spinal cerebellar, and then there's a cuneo cerebellar. What spinal cerebellar track passes through the superior? Sorry about peanut. What? I'm sorry. It's the accessory No. That's one now. <laughs> you can rule out Kino said, brother. So, which one passes through the spirit of peanut? Posterior. That's two down. <laughs> Anterior, you're right, Jerry. All right, the answer is. All right, that's the only one that passes through the spirit. What's the name of the spirit pit? What's another name for spirit peduncle? Cerebral peduncle. Connects the midbrain to the cerebellum. What's another name for them? Brachium. Brachium no, it's yeah, the middle peduncle. What passes through the, what's another name? Brachium conjunctival. <coughs> All right, the middle peduncle. What, what, what cranial nerve passes through the middle peduncle? I'll narrow it down to you. Five or seven. Five. All right. Five passes through the middle peduncle. What's another name of the middle peduncle? All right. Inferior peduncle. That's the one that's got all action in it. 
What's another name for that? Rest upon body. All right. Which? All right. Which? Sub. Spinal cerebellar tracts pass through the inferior pedal. Posterior. Posterior and cuneal. All right. All right. What's the main efferent pathway out of the cerebellum? Superior. Got it. And what? What's the main outflow? From the cerebellum, is it from the cortex or from deep cerebellum nuclei? Deep cerebellum. All right. What's the biggest one? What's the most medial? Vestigial. Vestigial. Where does it go to? It goes. It goes to our archaic cerebellum. All right. It goes back to vestibulars. All right. That's a much different. But what what enters in the um, middle pinnacle? Where's your no, they're the inferior peduncle too. Things come down from the cortex and they come into the middle peduncle. And they come in with uh, mossy fibers and then inferior peduncle, those common fibers. What are the three layers of, uh, of the cerebellar cortex? Yeah, molecular, Okay. And what is the output of so? What what cell, what one cell is the output of the cerebellar cortex? <coughs> For Kenji. Where, is it, where does it object to? Scan has completed. Huh? No, it projects just the deep cerebral nuclei. All right. It goes, and is that an inhibitor or excitatory? Inhibitory. And then the output from deep cerebral nuclei out, is, is, is that an inhibitory or excitatory? Excitatory. Got it. All right. Why don't y'all take a break? We're about there, we'll get started. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey, Joe. He is. 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 He